All right, we're going to go over a couple of techniques that uh, we'll be using in this course. I've just put her in a silly pose here for the moment uh, to make sure that the control rig has all the basic concepts there. Uh, some of the basic concepts, I suppose there's a number of things we might be adding in a bit. But um, before we continue, let me remind you, flipnormals.com slash creator slash vilavivero, artstation.com slash vilavivero slash store, and filovivero.gomoro.com. These are three places you can go to if you want to get the full tutorials or support my work in any other way. All right, let's take a look at what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to have a few different techniques that I'm using all the time. So let's go ahead and set something up. So we're going to set up a, an armature here. We're going to get into edit mode. And we're going to extrude this bone up. All right, so we've got two bones here. This is a fairly common uh, setup here, and we get in, let's say, uh, pose mode. We can do things like rotate this bone here, rotate this bone here. Okay, so one thing I'm very often interested in, in the elbow, in the knees, in the hips, and all kinds of places, is what is the angle between these bones right here? Like here, they're straight, they're pointed straight. Here, they're at 90 degrees. Here, they're basically uh, touching, right? And so you can imagine maybe I want to think about like say, this is an elbow, right? And this is the inside of the elbow here. And, and I want to do something with uh, her biceps or something whenever her, she's bending her elbow. The more she bends her elbow, the more I want to do something with the biceps. So that's one example of when I want to do that. But I want to do it all the time, everywhere. So before I would use a driver, right? I would add, a, calculate the, um, the angle between these. And the angle here would be about zero and about here would be 180 and about here would be 90, etc. And like, I could use that to do driving something with the bone, but I don't like drivers in general. And so I was like, is there some way I can do that with constraints? And it turns out, yes, there is. So what I can do then is I can take a third bone. So let's go back into edit mode here. Let's create another bone from here and let's extrude that up to here. So now we've got um, three bones and I suppose I need to view this in some other way. So let's do wire so we can see through the uh, bones to other bones and kind of see what's going on here. All right, then we'll get back into, I suppose, shall we view this as, for now, I think we're going to go ahead and leave this as an octahedral uh, display, but uh, for the next section, I'll also be doing bendy bones. All right, so we've got this big bone here that basically goes from this one to this one. All right, what is the purpose of that one? So let's say, this one down here, can I click it? There we go. Let's say this one is called uh, upper arm. And let's say this one down here is called forearm. Then this big bone here is going to be called basically MCH, how much bent, let's see. And what I want to do then is I want to take this bone uh, and make it a child of this other bone here. All right, so let's grab that parent. Uh, do I want it connected? I don't want it connected. I just want to keep offset. <clears throat> so now if I take this bone here, and move it, then this child bone moves along for the ride. This bone is already a child because it's attached to the bone. All right, so what I want to do then is take this bone here and make this bone stretch to it. And so there's uh, this little bone driver, bone constraint properties here. So <clears throat> I don't actually need to do that. I can do this here. And I'm going to do a stretch to constraint. And so what happens now is if I grab this bone here and move it, uh, I thought I had this as a stretch to constraint. I wanted to go to the tail. Uh, there we go, and reset. Okay, so now if I grab this bone here, you see it stretches to it. So what I can do now is I can say, all right, well, if the bone is its full um, scale, then probably the joint that it corresponds to is not bent at all. If it's about, let's say, 50% scale, then that means the bone is uh, bent about 90 degrees, and if it's down to basically 0.1 scale here, then the bone, the joint is bent uh, completely. All right, okay, I was wondering what was going on here. That's this bone's uh, changing there. All right, so what now I can do is, let's say I have a, a totally different bone. So let's take this bone here and duplicate it and move it over here. Make sure it is not parented, it's just sitting 
off to the side uh, and let's make it here. And so the goal is we want this one, let's say to rotate um, or scale along with the bending of this other bone. All uh, right, and this one we want to get rid of any constraints it's got. There we go. So our goal is then to take this bone, be able to move it and have something happen to this bone over here at the same time. So what we could do is we can take uh, this bone here, the bone that is stretching to, we'll call it, and it's called like, again, I named it MCH, how much bent, right? And I can pick this other bone that I want something to happen to it, and I can add a transformation. This transformation lets me map from something to something. So what I want to do is map from the scale, and it's going to be the Y scale here, right? So Y scale from, let's say, 0.1 to 1.2, let's say. So that's from nothing to, well, actually, this will only ever be uh, 1 is the max. So I suppose in this case we want 0.1 to 1. Uh, other times you might have this stretching too such that it can lengthen, uh, but for this case it can never lengthen, it can only shorten. So it's going to go from 0.1 to 1 on the scale. And what we want to do is map that to something. Let's say, let's map it to the location. That's a typical thing, right? And so I want to say it's y-axis, so I want it to move up and down as the other one bends. So we want to, let's say, location, 0.5, uh, 0.5, let's actually do negative 0.5 to 0.5. So now if I take this bone, uh, what did I do wrong here? Probably I want that in local space. There we go. So uh, because that's going from 0.1 to 1, and it is 1, then it's going to be moving. So we really want that to be something like 0.1 and uh, we don't want it to move at all. So we want it only to move on its y-axis as this other one turns. So now if we, as you see, as we turn this, the other bone is moving up. It's not moving very much. So we can, I suppose, make that 0.5. Uh, then I'll move a little bit more. So now you can see it doesn't matter which direction I bend this uh, joint, that other bone moves. And so basically what I'm doing then is using this bone here, its scale, to decide how much this other one is going to move. And I can do other things like rotate, right? So maybe I want it to rotate on its y-axis from uh, 90 degrees to, uh, let actually I suppose, right, zero to 90. Uh, we can't tell because, well, we should actually be seeing that moving. Why is that not moving? Rotate, all ah, right, because I need to take from the Y uh, from the Y on this and map it to that. Okay, so then I suppose that would be something like 90 and zero. So now if I take this one, the more I rotate it, the more that other bone rotates. And it always rotates the same because remember, it's only the scale of this green bone here that is affecting the rotation of that one there. And so it will only ever rotate to the right, it'll only ever rotate a certain amount, and it'll, and that's, that gives you some control for this over here, just depending on how much a joint is turned. So we'll be doing that on her ankles, when we want her calves to change, we'll be doing that on her, uh, <coughs> we'll be doing that on her fingers, we'll be doing that on her um, neck, I believe, in a couple of places, uh, we'll be doing that on her glutes in a number of places, uh, all around our hips. I think there's going to be four different bones to do that. So this is the first construct we've got going here. So that is all good. We, we've got that. But the, the other thing that we're always doing is um, having one thing be a child of another thing and not move as much. So let's take and get rid of the constraint on that. Let's actually get rid of this bone entirely. So now we'll have three bones here. And uh, this bone here, let's make it a child of this right here keep offset. All right, so if we go into um, pose mode, if we turn this, there's a parent-child relationship. This is the parent, this is the child, this is the child of that. So as this one moves, this one moves the same. What if we want this one to move like the others, but not quite as much? That's a very another very common thing. And so what I'll commonly do here is I'll take, say, this bone here, get back in edit mode, duplicate it, right? And so let's say that bone there is called um, MCH, uh, hold, uh, hold, let's call it um, move bone. And then the other bone that's going to be right underneath it is going to be called, uh, let's call it say def move bone, right? So we've got this def move bone here and I suppose we can move it a little bit so that we can see that there are two bones there, right? Now, if I take these and move them, one thing I might 
do is say this, uh, that's the bone that's supposed to move. This is going to be our mechanism bone that holds. This is, we want to make a parent, uh, we want parented to something that is a parent to this. In this armature, we don't have social things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear the parent entirely. And so what happens now is if I'm in pose mode, if I turn this, the, um, the deformed bone here is moving, but the mechanism bone is not. It is, a, it is parented to something else, right? So what I end up wanting to do is grab the, um, the hold bone, MCH hold move bone, and then the bone that actually moves, and I want to copy its location and scale, or excuse me, location and rotation usually. Scale I usually don't want to limit, but in this case I'm going to limit all three. Uh, no, I think I'll just do like I normally do. So I'll do a copy rotation, a copy location, and a copy rotation. And so if we go and look, we'll see there's these two constraints on here. If I grab this and turn it, now that bone doesn't move at all because it's uh, copying the location and rotation of the mechanism bone. But we want it to move some, and typically what I'll do is I'll put this in a pose space, and I'll do that for all four of these. And then what I do is make it, uh, say, a partial amount, 0.5 and 0.5, let's say. Now if I turn this, it'll move along, but it won't move as much. So this is something I'll do very commonly with the scapula, with hips, with all kinds of places. I'll be uh, needing a bone to move along with the parent, but not quite as much. And so here, uh, and so you can also say, well, I want it to rotate along with the other one just about as much, let's say 0.9, but I only want it to move just barely, let's say, so we could oh, uh, move barely as copy the location a lot, copy a, rotate a lot as also copy a lot. So oh, what I'll do is, oh, what is that copying the rotation? All right, it's copying the rotation of this. So we actually want it to not copy the rotation much because we want it to rotate a lot along with the parent. Let's say 0.2. Okay, so it's barely going to move. Um, that's actually maybe a little bit too little. Let's make it 0.8 here. Um, and then it's going to, uh, rotate quite a lot. So here it's basically rotating along almost completely the same as the parent, but it's barely moving. It's a very common construct I'll do. And so, uh, and so yeah, you'll see me setting up something like this quite a lot. When I do set up something like this, usually I have the whole thing in a bendy bone view. And so instead of octahedral, we're going to be seeing B bone. And that way what I can do is I can take, see my uh, deformed bone and I can make it uh, let's say a fair bit smaller in this case, right? So I can go to the bendy bones and make it say 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And now we can see the the mechanism bone versus the uh, deformed bone. They're very different sized bones and uh, very easy to work with that way. And so this is a very common thing you'll see in uh, the rig. And we're going to set that up a number of times. And uh, I think that's it for the special armature constructs. Uh, those are the only two things that I remember as being special. Uh, so everything else is going to be normal stretch to and damp track and, and copy location, copy rotation, and, uh, and uh, all those kinds of things.